Hello, welcome to, again, my basement. I am Bill Hennessy. I'm the pastor at North Presbyterian Church in Williamsville, New York. And I'm providing a little Bible study every day during this period of pandemic as we are uh, distanced from one another and uh, staying in our homes. So <clears throat> uh, what I use are the daily lectionary readings, which can be found at the PCUSA website pcusa.org. If you go there and search for daily lectionary readings, you'll find uh, the, the material that I use. And today we are looking at the Gospel of Matthew. This is a continuation of the Gospel, um, <coughs> part of the uh, Sermon on the Mount portion of uh, Matthew's Gospel. And the reading today is actually just one of my favorite readings in the entire uh, New Testament, really, but in Matthew's Gospel uh, specifically. It's just a marvelous um, reading and um, one that I really enjoy, so I, I hope that uh, you do too. This is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, uh, verses 25 to 34. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. That, that passage has always been, for me, just a, a source of comfort and perspective. Uh, because I can get overwhelmed with uh, concerns uh, very easily. And maybe you feel this way too from time to time. Just a, a sense of foreboding that uh, there won't be enough or I won't have, I won't be good enough or, you know, whatever it might be that is paralyzing. Uh, worry, fretting uh, is, you know, something that, that we all do and yet I think is, is a very little benefit for any of us. And Jesus hits that head on, especially with the, the group of people he's speaking to. And understand that, that the, the people around Jesus are, by and large, dirt poor. They are li people who live in poverty. They are people who have very little control over uh, their own lives, over uh, their own uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, fortunes. So, you know, to, to, to talk to people who often don't know where their next meal might be coming from uh, and encourage them not to worry about that, um, it's hard to know how well it was received. Um, I don't think Jesus is being cavalier about this. I don't think uh, he, he, he's simply telling them, you know, to, to, you know, not strive at all. But <clears throat> he wants them, I think, to let go of the fear that 
can really drive a wedge between them and, and one another and between them and God. Uh, and when we are so fixated on worrying about our personal needs, we shut out the world and those around us who um, are also in need. So this is, a, I think, an important, an important uh, reminder that Jesus gives the people around him. A couple of things in this passage that uh, I find um, really beautiful and poetic. Uh, you know, look at the lilies of the field and you know, Solomon in all his glory was not clothed as beautiful as they are. This idea that, that, that you know, we have all around us in creation evidence of God's goodness. It reminds me of that uh, Gerard Manley Hopkins uh, poem, you know, where he uh, talks about, uh, called God's Grandeur, um, where he, can, he talks about the goodness of things deep down. Um, <clears throat> or E.E. Uh, e. Cummings' poem, um, uh, uh, I thank you, God, for most of this amazing day, just extolling the beauty of, of the world and of the earth. So much of our lives are spent worrying and striving for... Uh, you know, that next meal or that next promotion or that next uh, uh, benefit of some kind that we ignore creation. We forget our surroundings and, and have trouble being thankful for what beauty surrounds us all the time. Jesus uses a, a method here. Uh, if God takes care of the sparrows and the birds of the air and the, and the lilies of the field so well, then surely God will take care of you. Um, <clears throat> that, that's a common sort of um, uh, technique of, you know, if, you know, this, then how much more that, you know? Um, in, in uh, some of Jesus' parables where he talks about, um, you know, if God, if you know how to take care of your children, then surely God can take care of you even better. Um, so, you know, we should look to the world around us uh, for um, the sort of uh, 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 hint of how God looks after us and how God is present for us um, in the ways that we can be present for one another. Um, so it's it's a, just a, a marvelous um, a marvelous passage and and then that that last uh, line. So do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will have its own problems. Today's worries are enough for today. Being in the moment. And this is a um, very important uh, spiritual uh, value and, and uh, affirmation that you find in really every great spiritual tradition. The importance of being in the now to be present where you are in this moment. It's something that, you know, it, it, it's a discipline that, it, that can be hard to, to practice because our minds tend to spiral, um, you know, way beyond where we are. Um, many times over my life, I have... Uh, sort of lost track of where I was because I was, you know, musing about something else that uh, um, I either was worried about or uh, was anticipating or in some way 
um, you know, uh, allowing to sort of uh, dominate my thinking. And I'm sure that we've all gone through that. We all sort of carry within us this, this dialogue, this constant yammering in our heads. Um, and Jesus is saying, look, you need to be present now. Be here now. Um, and it's hard to do. It's, it's something that uh, mindfulness meditation has been very helpful for. Um, at uh, the church at North, we have a couple of groups that come in a couple of times a week to meditate. I don't know, if actually nowadays, they're probably not meeting, but um, they, they come in and, and, and participate together in, uh, in this sort of common uh, meditation to become more aware of their place, of their where they are, who they are, um, their bodies. And doing that isn't just for its own sake. You know, mindfulness meditation is intended to lead us then to a deeper compassion because it reminds us and teaches us that we are connected to the whole creation, to all others, to, to God. And it's only through, I think, that, that sort of single-minded devotion that we can experience that and, and, and come to that realization. And again, worry is... Uh, a terrible barrier um, from experiencing that sense of unity. So this is a, an important um, mystical um, truth that Jesus is imparting, and it's available to anyone. This isn't some kind of secret knowledge that um, you know only the chosen few can can you know, accept and take on and, and practice. This is available to anyone, but it does take effort. You know, it's not easy to live in this way. And especially it's not easy for people whose lives are uh, marked by poverty, um, people who struggle. That struggle becomes your life. And uh, letting it go uh, is... Uh, frightening and and can even be uh, dangerous so you know part of I think what people can can take away from this is you know we can we can fall into I think the the um, uh, I guess understanding that, this is only available to certain people, that this kind of a lifestyle that Jesus is, is uh, promoting is really only available to people who have the leisure and the resources to let go of worry. But he doesn't mean it that way, and he's certainly not speaking to people who have that kind of leisure and those kinds of resources. And so it seems odd to me that his expectation would be that the people around him will never be able to live up to this. Um, <clears throat> what I think makes more sense, especially in our world, is if those of us who are, um, who do have the benefits of that, that those resources and that kind of leisure, work toward building a world where everyone has access to that um, rather than simply hoarding that for ourselves it's important that we work toward a society where everyone can be free of worry where everyone can give up wondering where their next meal is going to come from or whether they'll have a roof over their head tomorrow or whether they'll have clothing they need.
to get through harsh climate. Everyone should be free of that. And we, I think, need to be thinking about, you know, what kind of a world do we want to do we want to live in? What kind of society are we striving for? This passage, I think, um, sort of offers a, a standard, um, a, a way of living that should be available to everyone. You know, no one should should be forced to live a life of worry and fear because of their economic situation. You know, there are always going to be people who worry. People who are immensely wealthy worry. You know, we've learned over and over that those kinds of resources don't guarantee any kind of happiness. But in an in a society where there is such great um, um, inequity, you know, the disparity that exists, we need to be thinking about how we can close those gaps and make uh, a, a life that's free of worry and fear available. Not everyone may be able to take it, but it should be at least available. Everyone should have access to it so that we can all experience that sense of connection to one another, to creation, and to God. So I'll leave you with that. Uh, you know, this is not just a uh, personal piety um, passage. This is also has something to do with the kind of world we live in. I encourage you this day to be safe, be well, and uh, I look forward to talking with you again soon. And I'm looking very much forward to seeing people again very soon. But until then, we are bound together through God and through the Spirit that keeps us whole. Be well.